What's going on, everybody? Hopefully your week is going pretty good. I mean, we are past Wednesday now. Two more weekdays left to that weekend. That's if you got the weekend off. Uh, something that's been I've been wanting to talk about, and it deals with the PSA financial guarantee of a grade and the authenticity of the card. Now, a couple people I know have done reholders on their cards. And when they did it, PSA somehow, some way, regraded the card, said it's not going to be a 10, this should be a 9, or whatever it may be offhand, all right? And with that being said, you know, um, a couple people used group submitters, some people did it on their own. But the people that did it on their own, what I found out, and I knew this for a while, is that they got reimbursed for their card. They were offered one of two options, either one, they would take the card and buy it face or at the market value, and they just give them the money. Or two, um, they would refund the difference between the 10 and 9 and return the card to them. So I'm going to pull this up on the screen, and this is nothing like me trying to prop PSA or anything like that, because I couldn't find anything on Beckett or SGC that had anything like this. And if they do, somebody put me a link in the comments so I can, you know, talk about it as well. Because if a company is going to put this guarantee of a grade out there and say, hey, if we gave it a 10 and now it's a 9 because of the standards. Because we all know, and I can tell you, I don't think they will openly admit it, but the standards of grading have changed over the years. They really, really have. So what used to be a 10 like in 2005 may not be a 10 now. All right. Let me figure out where I just had this at here. There we go. I'm going to blow this other screen up here. All right, there we go. And as you can see, P PSA is on the air right now, too. All right, <laughs> they're live. So this is what I'm talking about. If you go to the very bottom of the any of their website, and I'll show you where I found it. It's right here, the PSA guarantee. And like I said, I tried searching other companies to see if anybody else did this. I've known about this for a long time. And other people did not know about it. Um, two people were shocked that they got contacted by PSA over it. One person uh, had no idea about it at all. And they went through a group submitter. And um, two other people didn't even get called by PSA. They had to you know, get in touch with them back saying, hey, and I don't know if it's dealing with new people in or what it may be. And I, I've heard all kind of different things that, oh, well, PSA is trying to control the pop count and all this stuff, so they lowered a 10 to a 9. A, I, I don't know. I mean, it's all, you know, we can't prove anything onto it. It could be. I, I have no idea. But the more of the purpose of the video is that if you do go out there and buy something, you understand what this financial guarantee means, all right? And just so everybody can understand, okay, so here, here's your piece right here, that they'll buy the card back from the submitter at the current market value if the card can no longer receive a numerical grade under PSA standards. I can tell you that had to have changed because they offered two of the other people either way, and it was just a lower grade. So I was thinking that number one only dealt with if the card came back like not being authentic now or something like that there where oh man somebody slipped a good reprint through or a trim card or something like that from my understanding i mean they had to call psa up they got emails about it called them direct and they gave me their option which i really like having either option because i don't know if i'd want to get a nine back and just get the difference I'd rather, hey, if you guys are just going to pay me for the whole thing, go for it so I can go buy myself a 10 on the marketplace, you know. All right, move down. Number two is right here. This says refund a difference in value between the PSA grade and the current PSA grade, so the original to the current, if the grade is lower. In that case, the card would also be returned to the customer along with a refund for a difference in value. I know I have two people that are fighting this right now with PSA, and... Please, if you go to submit anything and it's going as like you're getting it reholdered or whatever it may be, have pictures of it. 
That way you could show um, the old serial number and all that. Because with the new hires that they got in and people they were pushing around, some people may not have known this and just skipped through it and forgot all about it. And it could happen. I could see it with the rush that happened with everything. But if I was anybody doing any kind of submissions, like even with some of the people that I do their stuff with, I videotape it, send it to them, and then that videotape's on them to keep on to it. Um, just for their proof case they ever have to go back in and, uh, you know, fight it. Because I do have a couple people's accounts that I still send in. It's their accounts. And I just do all the legwork for them. Um, but... That's the easiest way on doing it. You have a video that shows what the cards are, serial numbers, all that stuff along the way. Alright, so this is the other part I want to hit at. Uh, okay, the current market value is determined by PSA according to the SMR, stuff like that. Um, they will use eBay onto it. So, and if it's something huge, they might have to use auction houses and try to find something. All right, exceptions to the guarantee apply, including but not limited to the following. The guarantee does not apply to any card as to which a clerical error was made. So if it was meant to be a 9 and it's in the pop as a 9 and it says 10, they're not going to hook you up. That was just bad QA. and You're not going to get it. I, I'm guessing this has happened in order for them to have this in there. That's why. The guarantee does not apply to any card that has been removed from the PSA holder or any card for which the PSA holder shows evidence of tamping. That's a good thing there. The guarantee does not apply to a card that has been environmentally damaged so due to improper storage or natural disasters such as fire or flood. Again, I guess they're putting this stuff in there because somebody's tried to do it. And they're like, no, there was damage because you didn't have it stored properly. You know, you had it in a storage unit. Uh, and it wasn't temperature control or nothing. So I can see why they say that. It also does not apply to card exhibiting deteriorations sub subsequent to initial grading. That there, I mean, I kind of get, but, you know, it's in their case. That that's, that's one of them gray areas that I was looking at there. The guarantee applies only to the grade assigned to the card and does not apply to the authenticity of any autograph, nor the grade assigned to any autograph. And the guarantee does not apply to and cannot be utilized by the original submitter or the submitter's agents, employees, affiliates, representatives of the graded card. So, if I go out there and I, get a, and I grade a card PSA 10. This is the part where I want to explain it just to make sure everybody understands it. I get a, grade, a card graded PSA 10. Well, actually, we're going to go back in time. I, about, was it 2013-14, I reholdered my uh, vintage stuff, my Roos, my Clementes, and stuff like that there. So, I was the original owner of those cards with those grades. At that time frame... And that's from the time that those cards were first graded. From the, I was the original submitter of those cards. So, 10 years later, or whatever it was, 12 years, something like that. If they would have said, hey, no, your 7's now a 6, or a 6.5, I'm not getting any money back onto it at all. Because I'm still the original owner of the card, which does seem messed up. I got it. It really does. Um, but... That's part of their thing on to it. Now, if I would have went out and bought that um, Clemente, say, at a PSA 7, and it was in the old cases, just looked funky, people were questioning it, and I'm just like, ah, eh, I'm going to reholder them all. And the card comes back now as a 6 or 6.5, six I am entitled to that money. Because it was not graded by me. I didn't go through a group submitter to get it graded. None of that stuff because they could actually look into who graded what card onto it. Because if I would go into my account, it shows every card I've had graded out there with the serial numbers onto it. So, I mean, don't try doing anything flashy where, you know, it, it, <laughs> I don't want to say like all of a sudden like my PSA 10 Tops Chrome LeBron James rookie 
I send it in and it goes from a 10 to a 9, sit there and be like, oh, no, well, I sold this to Joey over at CVC and we just did a deal and I got it back. I'm still the original submitter of the card. Yeah, it's some crazy stuff. I mean, they put a lot of bylines into it and everything like that. But if you're the original submitter of the card, you're just not going to get any money back onto it. The other thing I want to tell everybody, um, because I know a guy who bought a LeBron Topps rookie from eBay. And I'm guessing it was like four years ago, roughly. He cannot pull the picture up of the card on eBay to show the serial number onto it. And th this is where the hiccup comes into play because he used a group submitter and all this other stuff. If I would buy a card off of eBay, I always print my receipts out and stuff. I think from now on I'm going to start capturing the whole auction onto it just to have it in case something like that happens. For a higher value card, of course. But it, it made no sense with what he was telling me. And I'm like, they should still just do it because they can look up that original serial number and be like, hey, it's no, it, you know, it wasn't submitted by you. Now, we're still trying to find out if the serial numbers are the same on that one. But that that's a different, like, solo case out there. But the other people, they all got paid. It took, I want to say it was like two to three weeks from the time they were notified so they got the check in the mail from PSA onto it. So kind of a quick turnaround, I mean, compared to, you know, how long we're waiting on getting our stuff graded and stuff. But... It's a pretty good guarantee out there. A lot of people don't know about it. Um, I figured I'd do a video just hitting uh, about it. That if you do grade with PSA, this is one of their, you know, loophole or not loopholes, but their guarantees to where you know, hey, we grade it. That's the grade onto it. If not, we're going to pay you. You know what the market value is on it. But, yeah, no, I, I was having a lot of talks about this, too. And this is one of the crazy things that I was talking about. Um, so, say, we'll use my Herbert iMac, PSA 10. Everybody knows I have that. So, we're going to say five years goes by, Herbert becomes a super stud out there, right? PSA now has these new cases out, we're going to say, these new high-tech labels. And I got to get the new one onto it. I honestly probably would fear sending it in and them coming back saying it's now a PSA 9 onto it because I wouldn't get reimbursed for it at all. That's the bad thing onto it. Um, when you start doing the reholdering onto it. To me, I don't think they should be looking at the reholders at all onto it unless it's something majorly wrong with it to where they do an inspection. But I'm guessing they are looking at it. I don't know. I, don't, I have not sent an email out yet to PSA because I do have some questions on to it. If I do get a response once I send the email out, I'll let everybody know what they say on to it. And also, if you guys know where if Beckett has something like this or SGC or HGA. I didn't really look at HGA to begin with. I was just looking at Beckett and um, SGC and I couldn't find anything on to it. Uh, maybe I missed it when I was scrolling through stuff onto it, but hit me with a link or send me an email with it because I'd like to give them, uh, you know, a video talking about it as well, just so everybody's aware that, you know, there's a guarantee or policy out there onto something like this. All right, everybody, that's pretty much it. Don't forget, overtime will be Friday night again. And we will not have overtime the following week because I have to do a return trip with my mom to Pennsylvania. And I'm not too sure what time I'll be back on Friday. I'm trying to think. Um, Top's gold label was supposed to be mailed out today. Um, so that should be in the store. I will probably start out if I do get everything in on Friday. Opening up that box of Sterling Live. Uh, Bowman Sterling, and if Leaf Pro Set Metal comes out, I'll have those in the store too. I did get two boxes, but they did not show up today, so we might not see those till next Monday offhand. But other than that, everybody, take care of a good week. Hopefully I get to see you on overtime Friday night. It'll be 10.30 again, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. All right, take care, and I'll see you all next video.